So Aaron, uh, I think it's time that I broke the news to everyone about why we're even making this trip. Uh, why are we making this trip? We have to go pick up parts that a buddy of ours couldn't make it down to bring to us. We had good intentions, but we're gonna have to go. We're having to go up there, and what is it? Three and a half days, one way. Yeah. Yeah. So we're motoring along. Motor, motor sailing. Motor sailing to uh, Island Murata. Uh, Island Murata. Yeah. You see our buddy Luke. What do you have that you're picking up? Um, the part that unfurls the front sail, the furler. So long story short, uh, we had a friend Luke uh, that was bringing us a bunch of stuff that we had ordered. Uh, so I've got about uh, I don't know somewhere between six and seven thousand dollars worth of stuff that Luke was uh, going to bring to me. I've been waiting in Georgetown for about two and a half months. Uh, Luke was finally able to get underway from Gulfport, where I was anchored at before I left Florida. And uh, about two weeks ago, he got underway. Uh, he made it to Isla Mirada. He's been having boat issues. Uh, nevertheless, he's not going to be going to the Bahamas. Uh, Aaron's been waiting for his stuff. Uh, some more people in Georgetown have been waiting for their stuff. Uh, I got to get to the DR before uh, hurricane season and the longer I wait the eastern easterly trade winds get even worse so Aaron and I came up with the plan and uh, we are hot shotting it to Isla Mirada to get our stuff well we are gonna get our stuff uh, probably do a grocery run and uh, get back to Georgetown as quick as humanly possible and then everybody's gonna go their own ways to wherever they're going for hurricane season. So I'm Amy, a Midwestern Canton girl, and this is my boat, Maritopia. After moving to Florida in 2020, buying a $5,000 Facebook Marketplace worn out 1973 Pearson sailboat and spending two years endlessly working on her, I quit my job and have started my solo sailing adventures with the goal to truly immerse myself into as many different cultures as possible. I hope you're able to enjoy the videos as much as I do living the experiences. Well, you can tell that we're back in U.S. waters because... The radio's going non-stop on channel 16 from the Coast Guard doing their pan pan, pan pan, or pon pon, pon pon. It's really irritating that you do it so much, Coast Guard. I don't know why you do it. If anybody can let me know, that would be awesome. Because you just don't hear that in the Bahamas. It's nice and relaxing. You only hear radio chatter when it's important. Of 
wearing the same clothes. I finally changed. So does Aaron. We didn't want to stink everybody up when we went to the grocery store. So we're on our we're on our way in. Maritopia is right there. These waves are pretty big, so she's rocking. But uh, we have a lot to do today. So. Going slow on the dinghy right now because the waves are so big. I don't want to be soaking wet. So. We'll see you at the grocery store. Well, after about a three quarter to a mile walk, we're here at um, Publix. Let's see how much money we can save by buying here versus in Bahamas. Here we go. It's probably difficult for most to understand, but I was insanely happy to be in an American grocery store. Something as simple as going to the grocery store is something that everyone takes for granted, myself included, until I started living off grid. While having been in the crazy, beautiful, and picturesque Bahamas for five months, it does in fact have some downsides. For one, groceries are like around twice as much or more as in the States. And the stores don't have what I as an American am used to. Simple things like bounty paper towels or the chips I prefer. So there was no way in the world I was going to sail six days and not take the time to make a grocery run. wonder what the chances are I can fit all of this in this bag. I guess we'll see. I was so happy to have the chance to get some of my favorite food items that I was beginning to wonder if I'd overdone it and would need to return some of the things. Yikes. This is going to be a fun walk. Got a big bag, a little bit smaller bag. I'm gonna be worn out. My body was beyond worn out having lugged all those groceries a mile back to the dinghy dock, but we had far too much to get done to take a break. We took the dinghy about four miles to Luke's boat where we met up with what would be an armada of gracious friends to help transport everything to Maritopia, and it absolutely took all four dinghies to get the job done. While it might not look like they're overly stuffed, keep in mind that if something falls over on the water, it's gone. You can't just pick it up and dust it off. And with the amount of electronics that we had, we had to be at least a bit cautious. The bridge that you see right there is the whole reason we couldn't get Maritopia anchored close to Luke. In order to do so, we would have added another entire day of sailing in order to get to a bridge with the height to fit Maritopia under. Go do delivery service. Salty, working hard today. Loading up the Bahama run boat. Yeah, put all those illegal goods on the boat. <laughs> and of course I went grocery shopping before the everyone helped bring all that stuff over here, so. The inside of the boat is pretty well trashed. Hopefully all of this stuff that we just put on the boat can go up in the beaver. But there's a massive marine toilet for a lady that's down in Georgetown. And it's massive. I'm hoping it'll fit in that space. So This is what we came back to Isla Mirada for. like Christmas and took four dinghies to get it all over here it's 
So Aaron and I are gonna get it loaded inside right now. This old girl is packed, but we've got everything loaded and even have time to go to shore for a few drinks and dinner with Luke and our new friends before weighing anchor and making the return trip. Well, we came, we got what we needed, and we weighed anchor about an hour ago. After two and a half days of a non-stop sail, we had the anchor set for 10 hours. We got everything, now we're headed right back got the motor on again because the winds are light but the winds are predicted to pick up uh, in our favor and we're going into the Gulf Stream so since we are now headed east we will have the Gulf Stream in our favor which means that with the current in our favor we'll be able to crank some solid miles out tonight after yesterday being so exhausting I couldn't have asked for a more beautiful scenery than this it's mornings like this that continually reiterate why I'm so thankful for this lifestyle. Wish that I could stay. Wish for this moment to never go away. But it's all in my mind. Though I know that there is nothing to find. You're a beautiful sight in the summer night. You can't put up a fight in the misty light See how you roam While you roam in the streets all alone All you can see Thinking about what your life came to be Well, that's the morning. We made it across the Gulf Stream. I got some really good sleep. Aaron, did you get some decent sleep? Yeah, finally. Good. And now, we are wing on wing. The winds are pretty light, but uh, I just pulled the main over and uh, they gave us a couple tents, so we're we're going right at six knots. Well, I've got all of my stuff uh, separated over here, so I'll show you what uh, Santa Claus brought me for my Caribbean Christmas. The whole reason that I personally went back to uh, Florida was to get all this stuff. Uh, I am a rather new sailor still. Uh, it was my first time leaving the country uh, by myself anyway. So I had no idea what all I needed or what I was lacking. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing YouTube. Uh, so I didn't have any real camera equipment except the GoPro and my phone that I've always used. So here we go. I'll show you because I'm excited. Some oil. I don't know why, but 1540 that the diesel takes, that the boat engine takes, is uh, I have actually not seen it in the Bahamas. <laughs> A spare windlass. If y'all remember the very first time I set my anchor, or went to drop my anchor in Georgetown, I ended up having issues, so I bought a spare. I'm not going to put that on. I am just going to keep it um, for when need be. For building jack lines, it's a safety line that runs all the way from the front to the back on both sides so that when I go to the front of the boat, I can clip onto this line and uh, don't have to unclip and clip the different 
um, things that are already existing on the boat. So I will actually make my jack lines before I leave Georgetown. Spare windless solenoids. Uh, solar spotlights. Uh, the ones I have are broken. A couple of uh, funnels. They separate water. So when you're getting fuel at the station or putting it into the boat, you can go through this and it will separate the water out. I got a big one and a small one. A new uh, computer module for the freezer or the refrigerator. It's, they both use the same module. So a spare one of those. A spare triducer. The one that I have right now, the water speed and temperature is broken. The only thing that works on the one that I have, fortunately, is the depth. But I will put that in uh, eventually. A spare Starlink cable. I was doing some research. I've, I've not had any issues, but a lot of people have reported having issues of these with these cables. Uh, GPS antenna. A spare water maker membrane. A VHF antenna. And I'll show you why I need that in a second. Uh, selfie stick slash tripod, uh, NEMA 2000 cable, uh, camera clamp, spare outboard keys. Uh, when I got to the Bahamas, I had a Mercury, and now I have a Yamaha, and so I didn't have any spare cables. The wind vane, and just this piece of plastic right here. That is why my apparent wind doesn't work right now. A bird sat on it and broke it couple of cheek blocks that I actually don't even need anymore. This was when I was trying to figure out how to rig the uh, davits for the dinghy to pull up, but I've already got that figured out. Uh, a couple of mounts for the new VHF radio. Uh, microphones. I'm sure that you will all love that I have these, and there's more of them. This is just one brand that I bought. I bought three brands to see what I like better. And these are all, all of this stuff is NEMA 2000 stuff. Uh, spare clips for one of my uh, dive uh, fins. And EPIRB, Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon. Uh, especially because I'm solo, but every sailor should always have one of these. Uh, they're expensive little bastards, but I am very, very excited to have that. I now have my ship station license from uh, through the FCC. I've got my call sign, and I've, so therefore I've got my FCC uh, MMSI. So I will get that programmed into that once I have solid internet service back in Georgetown. A couple of spare bilge pumps. Ha ha ha! A drone! Droney drone! Oh, I'm looking forward to learning how to use that. I've never owned a drone in my life. A spare engine starter. Spare iPad, iPhone uh, charging cables. These are clips for my covers that go on the Dodger. I don't like the ones that I have been using. They just, they break too easy. So, got a bunch of those and the tool to cut the hole. Uh, oh, here's a GPS antenna. Here's a Garmin GPS antenna. Here is another Garmin GPS antenna. So, currently the only thing on my boat that has the old name on it is the existing VHF. So, now that I have my uh, ship station license, I will program my Maritopia MMSI into this. Uh, and that's what the VHF antenna is for. No, actually, I'm sorry, it's not. The VHF antenna is for this. This is the AIS. Uh, automatic indicating system, I think. Uh, I have a receiver on the boat right now, so I can only see other boats. 
this sends and receives so other boats can see me. The VHF antennas for this and so are the GPS antennas. And one of the GPS antennas is for that. And the third GPS antenna is for the chart plotter which has a built-in GPS. But I wanted an external uh, just to make it easier. And I highly doubt that I'm going to use all three of those GPS antennas, two Garmin's and one knockoff. Uh, but I wanted to get all of them because I was remote. I am remote in the Bahamas. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I had the right thing. Aha, uh -huh, Insta360 camera. What? Stoked about this. I should. I am so stoked about this. I should be able to get some great shots with this. And the invisible stick, some nitrile gloves for when I get back to work on the boat. Uh, the remote, uh, the one that I have on the boat right now is a Ram 3. This one is a Ram 4. It hooks to the VHF, but there's a long cable between them. This is the one that's in the cockpit. This is the one that's inside. And more microphones so. guys like I cannot tell you enough how excited I am to have all this stuff we will get back to Georgetown and uh, sooner than later I will get to work on my boat I will get rid of all of this other stuff that belongs to other people and I will get underway to the DR for hurricane season I'm looking forward to actually working on my boat again. We are averaging just over six knots, which is crazy fast. Uh, we've, it's been right at 24 hours since we've left, and we have done 144 miles. Of course, motoring means using fuel. We may have been able to make it all the way to Georgetown, but I didn't really want to take that chance. So after crossing the Bahama Banks, we pulled into the highborn Key of Marina to top up with fuel. And my oh my how out of place I felt, pulling my $5,000 Facebook Marketplace boat into the same marina where multi-million dollar yachts are docked. I feel so out of place. I mean, that boat right there is probably 10 million. I don't know where that flag's from. Then we got my boat. And we got a... Oh, 15 million? We got... Those massive yachts. And how they're... They're dingy their service boat, which is the one with the Yamaha engines on it over there, the white ones, that's probably bigger than my boat. But we needed fuel. We've had to motor way too much. So it is what it is. It put us behind a while, but it was nice. We didn't have to put the dinghy in the water. We could pull right up to the dock. After topping up the fuel with the winds finally in our favor, it was time to hoist the sails and make the final leg of this very long voyage. With time to spare, it was the perfect opportunity to unwrap the new Insta360 and start messing around with it. It's going to take some time and a lot of patience to figure out the editing, but this will end up being a very neat camera. I can't wait to start using it more. There was a light in this town. It had a really nice sparkle. I was about to
it's looking like we will be there at about 2, 2.30 in the morning. Well, we're back in Georgetown. And it's right at 4 o'clock in the morning. And it is pitch black. Um, there's no way in the world that I would be going into this anchorage if I didn't already have breadcrumbs from my previous trips in and out of here. Because there's zero moonlight at all. Uh, in fact, the moon has already gone down for the night, but it was a crescent moon, and it was just a sliver of a crescent moon at that, so uh, there was basically zero moonlight all night. But here's what it looks like uh, in the anchorage for reference, because it's black out. You can't see anything. So, fingers crossed that everyone has anchor lights working anchor lights because hey, otherwise it's gonna get sketchy so you can see the anchor lights way down there we're still about two miles out but uh, it's black gotta hope everyone has working anchor lights and with that this nonsensical 750 mile voyage has finally come to a close. Time to get some sleep before waking up in the morning to start installing some of the safety items I've brought back. If you'd like to stay up to date and follow along with the adventures, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Join me next week as I put the sewing machine to work and get several other safety items installed, all in preparation for my longest offshore passage yet. But before that, I'm able to make some time and have some fun practicing with the drone.